In just one month, the coronavirus has caused the smartphone market to shrink by 13%, the fastest ever drop in history. And now that the entire world is in lockdown, not only has production slowed, so has sales. So what is going to happen to phone companies? Let's find out. Now this video could have been 40 minutes long, but I've cut this down into three main sections based on company size, the big dudes, the medium dudes, and the small dudes. So let's start with the big dudes. So um, Samsung, Huawei, and Apple are most likely gonna be fine. Huawei's founder said in an interview, it's not a problem for them to survive as a company, but whether or not they can keep their leading position as a smartphone manufacturer. Samsung, on the other hand, basically said, you know what, we good. We're not going to lose our spot as one of the top manufacturers, but we are going to make less money. Now, finally, Apple, they said they will still see their profits increase in 2020, but they're basically going to make less profits. So for the big guys, you know, it's not super threatening, this whole COVID thing, and honestly, not that interesting to talk about. So let's move on to the medium dudes and our start with Xiaomi. They are the biggest of the medium dudes, and the impact on them has been a lot bigger. For example, all their Indian plants got shut down for 21 days. And some of you might be asking, what's the big deal? Well, India comprises 35% of Xiaomi's global smartphone sales, which are about 125 million, and they sold over 42 million smartphones in India in 2019. So that is a huge chunk. Now, in addition, all their retail stores in Europe got closed down and the same thing happened in China. It's not as bad though, because most of their sales are done online. Um, so that is not that big of an issue. That being said, Xiaomi claims that around the time of this recording, they have around 80 to 90% of their manufacturing capacity back, but analysts still say they're probably gonna ship 50% less smartphones in the first quarter of 2020. With that being said, they did see an increase in their online services revenue, probably because everyone in China is at home and online doing this and that. So will Xiaomi survive? Yeah, they're, you know, they're big enough. However, it's not going to be as easy as the big guys. Another medium company here that I want to talk about is Oppo. They're the parent company to OnePlus and Realme. And they aren't doing that well either. Their smartphone sales have also dropped, obviously. And the other thing is that their global marketing chief, a dude called Brian, stepped down due to health reasons and that they look forward to having him return to work. Yeah, well, not so sure about that at this point. Still though, Oppo is the fifth largest smartphone manufacturer in the world, just behind Apple, Samsung, Huawei, and Xiaomi. So you know what? They're not going bankrupt either. Now there are other medium sized smartphone companies that we could talk about, but honestly, the story is mostly the same. They're not going bankrupt, but they are gonna feel the hurt a lot more than the big dudes like Apple and Samsung. Now, let's move on to the small dudes, and this is where the stuff gets real interesting. So, when you think about a small smartphone brand, who do you think of? For example, for myself, I mostly think of Chinese brands like, you know, Yumi Digi, Elephone, Ocotel, Smartisan, etc. Now, things weren't easy for them in the saturated smartphone market in the first place, especially when you have medium sized companies or, you know, quote unquote, medium sized companies like Xiaomi creating such great smartphones for cheap. But you know what? COVID just could be the stray that <laughs> I mean, the straw that breaks the camel's back. I sincerely believe that some of these companies will fail in part because the market's tough, of course, but also the coronavirus is a situation which is something that no company can properly plan for. And this could just put the right amount of pressure to kill some of these smaller smartphone companies off. And here is why. Now, small companies in general do not have a lot of cash laying around. They mostly live hand to mouth and very often they'll take loans just to do stuff like build phones. So when coronavirus rolls around, First off, people buy way less phones because you do not need phones to live, unlike food and toilet paper. Second, which bank is going to lend you money if you have no idea whether you can pay it back? I mean, imagine Elephone wants to take on a $400,000 loan to make their new Elephone U3 Pro and they want to make 100,000 of them. And 
Okay, this U3 Pro is a fake one I made up by the way, because they only have the U2 Pro at the time of this recording. So in this Corona time, they might not actually be able to sell enough U3 Pros to make back that $400,000 loan. So banks are way less likely to loan the money. And what happens to a smartphone company that cannot make smartphones? Well, you get the idea. So the money problems we just talked about are the beginning of their problems. Getting components in this market is harder than it used to be. I know because I know a lot of people who are experiencing this in their own jobs. Let me give you an example that's more smartphone related. Did you know that Samsung had to personally fly smartphone components for the Galaxy S20 and the Galaxy Fold from China to Vietnam? Another one is Micron the maker of storage for smartphones, they had to obtain special permission to continue operating. If Samsung had to go through so much trouble just to continue production of the S20 and the Galaxy Fold, just imagine what it must be like for smaller companies. Finally, the actual smartphone companies themselves, many of them could be operating under reduced capacity, especially because most, if not all of them, are located in China, their factories at least. Now this would of course increase the lead times it takes to make a smartphone because of the reduced capacities, you know, social distancing and all that jazz. And not only that, transportation has been super duper weird. Like transport by boat got destroyed in terms of volume early on in the COVID, which again impacted transport by plane. So, you know, the whole thing is kind of weird right now. I even know someone who had to ship something to South America and the original price was about $2,000 because it was a pretty big crate. And now it's $10,000 in the coronavirus time. And the shipping company won't even give you an estimated arrival date. That's how bad it is in some areas. So with all that being said, I do believe some of the smaller cell phone companies will fail and go bankrupt. I hesitate to actually say which ones, but I will say that I'm fairly confident the more popular small companies like Yumi, Digi, and Elephant won't go under, again, because they're fairly popular. But I do suspect that other less popular companies like Blackview and Verney, uh, actually, wait, I think Verney went bankrupt already. Um, anyway, um, they are way more likely to go bankrupt. In conclusion, difficult times, and there's really nothing you or I as an average consumer can do, which is sad. So the only thing we can do is wait, and hopefully it'll be proven wrong. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe, and have a good one. Peace.